All right, uh, I'm going to go through the transfer formula for inertia, but the full sequence, uh, and I'm going to use a different shape than what we had going in class because it, I think it's going to be easier to keep it simple. So you can go through the process and then you can apply it to any shapes. So it's it's pretty straightforward. But before you can do that, you have to have the composite centroid. So we have the individual centroids here and here. Uh, it's symmetrical about this axis, the y axis, so we don't need to do anything there. Um, but to get the y bar, uh, we'd have to run the centroid equation, right? So I'm going to assume the, the y bar is going to be like in here somewhere, right? That's what we're looking for, Y bar, the composite centroid. Here's individual centroid. I'll call this shape one and this shape two. And I'm just gonna write the equation, Y bar equals, and then since we have simple numbers, we can just do it in our head. So shape one, six times two is 12 inches squared. And then the distance of Y1, would be two plus this three, so five inches. And then shape two looks like it's 20 inches squared and then one inch up to its central. And all of that would be over the total area of 12 plus 20, 32 inches squared, okay. So let's run this real quick. Try not to make a mistake. That gives us two and a half. The Y bar, all right? So once you have that, then you have what you need to calculate. This is called the XX axis, typically. We need the inertia about this axis. So if these inertias are not there, then we have to transfer them, this transfer distance. So that would be D1 for shape one, right? And then D2 for shape two would be here. So these can be tricky to get. Uh, a big drawing is helpful, uh, kind of like what I have. And then, you know, you got to figure out like, okay, Y1 was five inches, right? So it's five inches up to here. And then it was 2.5 to here. So the difference would be between those two, 2.5 inches. So uh, a lot of times you're going to have to use your calculator. These are pretty simple numbers. So we can just kind of see it. And that's why I did it this way. D2 would be two and a half up to here, uh, take away this one inch. So it's going to be one and a half, right? Two and a half minus the one inch for D2. All right. So before you run the transfer formula, you got to find the individual inertias. And a lot of times those are identified as I sub O. So like about their own origin. Uh, and I always write a one. So this is going to be the inertia of shape one about its own centroid. Okay, you've got to find that first. And that's base height cubed over 12 for a rectangle. You know, if it's a structural shape, you're just going to look it up. Uh, the base is two. The height is six cubed over 12. You see what that is. It's like it's 36. And then I need that for the second shape. And that's going to be about this axis, right? <clears throat> Again, base height cubed over 12. You can just run this, right? Even though this is in a different position. 10 inches is the base. Two is the height over 12. So.
That looks like it's 6.66 repeat inches to the fourth. So now we have these individual inertias, okay? We have to transfer those because this one is here, needs to be here, and this one is here, it needs to be here. Once they're both there, we can add them up. So the transfer formula is Ixx, that's at this axis, equals I sub O, these guys, plus AD squared. Okay, so for the first shape, it's going to be 36 plus the area of it, area of the first shape, which is 12, times d squared, and the transfer distance is here, two and a half. Okay, so this inertia now, once you get it transferred, is going to be, let's see, 36. 2.5, we got to square it. Don't want to forget that. It looks like it's 111. So it changes the inertia quite a bit, right? It went from 36 to 111 when I moved it here. All right, so this is shape one. I got to do it again for shape two. So the inertia at this X, X axis is going to equal the inertia here. 6.66, repeat, plus its area, 20 inches squared, times its transfer distance, this one, 1 1.5 squared. That value is going to end up to be 2.5. Fifty one point six 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 inches to the fourth. So this one transferred one eleven. This one transferred fifty one six six six. Now they're both at the x x axis. I can add them up. Okay. So you just add them. One sixty two point six six inches to the fourth. That would be the inertia I would use for this shape in bending stress because it is the inertia at the composite central. So pretty easy on shapes like this where you can just pop these you know areas and distances out. Gets much more complicated when you have you know, something like this, and it's really small, and you have to figure out all these tiny distances. So you just have to be very careful with it. All right, I hope that helps and gets you through the homework set for Friday. Have a great, great weekend.